Hey, good morning. For this week's Friday video, I wanted to do something a little bit different. So instead of talking at you, I've had a lot of questions about the way I use glazes um, because I mentioned it in my last video and I think people were wondering, well, what do you mean by glazes? And there are all kinds of different ways to do this. So I thought I'd show you my way. Now, nothing in this video that I made is meant to be instructional. Um, I don't even know you know, this is not any technique that I learned from anybody else. This is just how I do it. But I wanted to share it with you. So I'm going to show you two things. I'm going to show you how I use a sander um, and how I combine that with glazing at the moment in my work uh, to bring tech to bring some interesting effects. And that is a total exploration. I don't know where I'm going with that. And then I'm also going to show you on this painting behind me how I use glazing in all of my paintings to build up areas that are interesting and deep and have lots of uh, texture and interest. So let's get right to it. Now with the sander, sometimes I'll be sanding little pieces, sometimes I'll be sanding back the whole thing. This is the whole thing. Now there were layers and layers of paint on that one uh, from different iterations of this painting and this is where the gives good texture for glazing over the top of. But sometimes I'm not doing a whole painting, sometimes I just want bits of it to have more texture and I want to be able to glaze back over. This painting is built up from layers of glazes so in some areas, I think they're a bit boring. So when you're using the sander in that way, you're using it almost like a paintbrush to create effects just in specific places. Right, so I have my sanded surface. Uh, I have some transparent paints here and I have some kitchen roll. And so I'm putting the kitchen roll into water and I'm dipping it into one of the colours and then I'm putting a glaze of that colour over a part of this painting. I have learned over time by trying them which ones are transparent and which ones are opaque. If I put an opaque colour over this, it will simply cover up the texture and you won't be able to see anything of it. Something like a cadmium red or a yellow ochre or a white is going to just cover that up. But this is a quinacridone magenta. This is a quinacridone violet. This is oh, another quinacridone gold and this is raw sienna. Any one of these will show the colours through. So let's try a different one. This is the quinacridone gold. I'm putting that on with the tissue. Now this is one way to apply these glazes. And over time you gain experience. So for example, I know that where there's very dark chips in here, I can glaze over that with a fairly dark color and they will look good, they will show through. I might take this quinacridone violet and go over that. Do you see how that those chips of black? They're not black anymore. They're this color, but very dark. So you just you have to trial and error. You have to see what happens. Now another way to do this is to slop on a lot of one of these colors where you want it, like this. And very wet again. Quite a lot of water, and then to just roll over it with your towel to remove the excess. Now this is not making a painting at the moment, it's just making really pretty colours and effects and much of this gets covered up but for now let's glaze all of it and then you can glaze of course over a colour that you've already done and if they're still wet as this one is they will mingle together to make a new colour. If it's dried it will just put a lovely effect of seeing one colour through another colour which is really nice. I put some dark. This this quinacridone magenta is lovely for the darker areas. I really like it. And of course, I'm just using pure colours, but you can mix two of these colours together. Let's do that. 
So I'm mixing the quinacridone gold with the quinacridone magenta. Oh, that's nice. Now we get this gorgeous, rich brownie orange color. Which is really nice. I'm gonna put some of that in this area as well. And if you feel like you've gone too dark with any of it, while it's still wet, you can come in and start rubbing some of it off. Do you see? So it's, you can put, put it on, take it off until it's, it's dry, which this is, and then it's stained it. But while it's still wet, you can take off, put on, take off. So then you can manipulate this by going in and making the textures that you want and then glazing over them. So sometimes what I will do is I will take some dark paint on a sponge or something, make patterns with it, then glaze over it and you get similar textures to what you got from doing the sanding. So that's nice too. And you can rub off more in one area than another to leave that stronger. Um, I really do like that colour I just mixed up. This is what's so great about playing with paint is you mix something by accident, now you have a new favourite colour. So I'm going to go back in with the pure magenta here, although I've got a little bit on my brush of the other. Um, again, just and glazing over patterns is really nice. So let's say you make, if you like patterns, let's say you make some bubble wrap pattern. You press bubble wrap down and then you glaze over it. Well, I can show you. Push that onto the picture wherever you want it to make a pattern. So now that really stands out because you've got these subtle glazes and then you've got this pattern that really stands out. So now I've got my patterns on here, which are dried. I've just used a hairdryer. I've I got some paint on my finger, so I've just spread that around on here. Just dabbed it on. And what we're gonna do now is go back over that with a light glaze. In my case, I'm watering it down. Some people use medium for this. Um, and on this section, I'm going to use some of this because this was the colour that I'd glazed over originally. So, so now that pattern's still there, and same for these bits that I added on. The pattern's still there and you still get the benefit of some interest in there, but you've, you've now gone over it with the glaze and turned it into something that blends in with the rest of the piece. I especially love it here where it looks like aged, antique That effect's lovely. So I might like to keep that when I'm, you know, in the final piece. But it's just all good fun. If you, if you see this as just fun and experimentation, then there's nothing to lose. So that is a glazed layer. Uh, now what would happen next is I would start adding in opaque colours. And opaque simply means colours that you can't see through. And then I would put glazes on top of those and then opaques on top of those and glazes on top of those to build up really deep interest. So let me show you that on a piece that's in progress. So this painting, this is three feet by two feet. Um, and this one I'm in the process of building up uh, glazes. So I thought this one would be a good one to show you on. Again, I'm getting my my little trusty towel and just putting very, very watery layers of glazes over these opaque areas. Now that one's a little bit thicker. And you see, rub it off, put it on, rub it off, put it on. I'm wanting to create layers and layers of interest in here and a lot of this gets covered up again. glazed over it with a gold colour which has created a green 
So this is the other thing about glazing. You can totally change a colour by glazing over it with another colour. And that's an, a lovely, really subtle way of mixing colour rather than doing it on your palette and applying it. That's another reason that I love glazes. Let's just do some changes to one more. But just to show you what I would do with this one now, uh, I've got lighter areas because I sanded. And now, so I'm glazing over those with a lighter colour. the glazing works and and as I said you can keep building up the patterns and textures so if I didn't want this to to stand out which I like it but if I didn't I could glaze over that and the pattern would remain but not the blue color so I hope that was helpful uh, it's, as I said, just my way of doing this, um, but maybe seeing how I do it might give you some ideas of things that you can try. Um, I hope you can't hear, behind me the tractors are cutting the grass in the fields and there's just this really horrendous noise, so I hope that's not too disruptive. Uh, that's it for me this week. Um, please listen to last week's Art Juice podcast if you get a chance. Alice and I were talking about how to use video uh, as a way of sharing your creative process, which is obviously what I'm doing here, and how effective that can be in attracting buyers for your art. Uh, so check that out, Art Juice, just look on my website for the podcast, or go to iTunes or Spotify, you can find it there. Um, oh, and the other thing I wanted to tell you is, I shall be running um, a mini, a free mini course coming up at the beginning of August. And this will be a week long and it will be a lead into a course that I'm teaching that's a paid course. But there's a whole week of free stuff. So even if you have no intention of taking my full course, there'll be a week of stuff like this. So if you're interested in that, uh, just uh, there'll be a link above this video that you can sign up to be notified. And anybody who signs up on that waiting list will automatically be invited to join that free course. Uh, so that's it for me. Have a great week and I will see you around next week. Bye.